The new Volvo XC60 really blew us away when it was launched back in late 2017 and that had a lot to do with how ridiculously well spec it was. You see it had the most powerful engine in its class, it had first in class air suspension and it had a vast vast equipment list and that even helped it win against every single one of its competitors in our recent comparison test. And it seems they've done more of the same with the new smaller XC40. It is really fully loaded. But will that be enough for it to beat its competitors in this more discerning segment? Well, that's exactly what we're here to find out. And to do that, we've brought along two of its strongest rivals, the BMW X1 and the Audi Q3. Now, which one is your pick? Do let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a like. And you have already subscribed to this channel, haven't you? And also click the bell icon to be notified every time we upload a new video. You have? Great. Now let's get back to the comparison test. What do we think about the looks then? They've done a good job of making the XC40 look upright and like a proper SUV and it helps that it's wider and taller than the others. Some might find it a bit quirky, but you won't disagree, it certainly has presence. Both the X1 and Q3 look a bit sleeker, more rounded and crossover-like in comparison. The Q3 in this spec does at least get some tough cladding, but the X1 in M Sport guys looks really hunkered down. But if you don't care much for the butch SUV image, then either of these might be more up your alley. The XC40's cabin has plenty of wow factor. The leather and Alcantara seats feel rich, the quality of materials is top-notch and several bits like the steering, vertical touchscreen and digital instrument cluster are carried over from more expensive Volvos, making the interiors very appealing. Though a bit unconventional, the youthful design complements the use of chrome and silver trim around the dashboard well. The stubby gear selector, however, can be fiddly to use and the orange-coloured carpets and door cards won't be to everybody's taste. But it's an option that can be unchecked. The X1 M Sports interiors impress with their chocolate brown and black theme. There's a generous use of soft-touch materials, double-stitched leather and lacquered wood. The three-spoke steering wheel with large shift paddles looks very sporty and is superb to hold. If there is a complaint though, it would be that the driving position feels more like that of a tall hatchback than an SUV. So unlike the other two, you don't get that commanding view of the road. The Q3 cabin is a mix of high quality bits with clean, if a bit unexciting styling. The black and beige theme and the champagne coloured highlights are a handsome touch. The driving position is raised and the high set seats give it a proper SUV feel from behind the wheel. However, in this company it feels a bit dated and that's because it is. The MMI infotainment system especially is a few generations old by Audi's own standards and the Volvo and BMW systems are far more modern. On the subject of equipment, the XC40 is by far the best kitted out here. For one, it gets radar-based safety kit like adaptive cruise control, semi-autonomous driving, collision mitigation, blind spot warning, lane keeping assist and more. It also includes premium features like a digital instrument cluster, powered tailgate, hands-free parking, heated front and rear seats, and a 9-inch touchscreen with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. All three SUVs get a reversing camera, dual zone climate control, paddle shifters, driving modes, auto headlights and wipers, panoramic sunroofs and 18-inch wheels. While the X1 misses out on wireless phone charging and keyless entry, it's the only car here to get a heads-up display. The aging Q3 on the other hand has some important bits missing from its feature list like USB ports, memory for the driver's seat and keyless go. The back seat of the XC40 isn't the best here. For a start the door opening isn't wide enough, space isn't as good as the X1 and the sense of space isn't helped by the rising window line. The backrest too is set in an upright position and isn't adjustable. Once you're in place and on the move however, it's not too bad. There's loads of room in the back of the X1, and apart from a slight lack of thigh support, seat comfort is good too. The seats can be slid fore and aft, and the backrest can also be reclined. The X1 also has the widest bench and is the best for a third passenger. You do, however, sit low down, much like in a sedan or a hatchback. 
The back seat of the Q3 is the comfiest of the lot with soft cushioning and ample thigh support. You even sit high up like you do in the front and get a good view out as a result. However, the backrest angle is quite upright and non-adjustable like the Volvos and the outright space on offer isn't as much as the other two. When it comes to boot space, the BMW rules the roost with a commodious 505 litres of luggage area. The Q3 has 460 litres in comparison, which is not too bad either. The XE40 also gets 460 litres, but it has some clever touches like a fold-up baggage separator that also has inbuilt luggage hooks. Space, practicality and equipment out of the way, let's see what these compact luxury SUVs are like to drive. The XC40 uses Volvo's D4 engine and that means a 2.0-litre, 4-cylinder diesel motor that produces 190 horsepower and it's made it to an 8-speed automatic gearbox. This motor feels quite strong, but it doesn't feel very urgent. Sure, the responses off the line are good enough, but it doesn't get going in the same way the BMW or even the Audi's motors do. This is not a car that likes to be rushed. Overall, it also feels the most refined motor of this lot. But of course, if you extend it a bit, you will get some of that nasty diesel clatter. The gearbox also feels very relaxed and works better at a more measured pace. And that means this car on the whole is not one for hard performance driving. So like the Volvo, the BMW also comes with a 2-litre diesel engine with 190 horsepower made into an 8-speed automatic gearbox, but it feels quite a bit different from that car. For instance, initially, it does feel a little bit sluggish with its responses and a little bit relaxed in its power delivery. But then you realize that's because everything is in comfort mode. And yes, it's very good for the city. To fix this, you simply put everything into sport mode. And then, it's a completely transformed car. Wow! The only thing I'm not too impressed with with this powertrain is the refinement. It's not the quietest of motors. And even if you discount the motor, road noise can be quite audible inside the cabin. The Audi Q3 also has a 2-litre diesel engine, but unlike the others, it makes a little bit less power at 183 horsepower. And instead of an 8-speed torque converter automatic, it uses a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic. The thing about this powertrain is that it feels absolutely effortless. Responses off the line are really, really good and then it pulls in a nice, smooth, linear manner all the way. It makes driving an absolute cinch in just about every condition. This gearbox also feels the quickest to react to your inputs, and therefore when you want an overtake, it doesn't take much effort to get going. A slight drawback I do feel is that it doesn't feel quite as refined as newer Audis and certainly not as refined as the Volvo XC40. With this more relaxed gearbox and power delivery, it's not too much of a surprise that the Volvo is the slowest to 100 kph, taking 9.54 seconds. The X1 and Q3 are both very closely matched, thanks to their strong powertrains and quick shifting gearboxes. The BMW doing it in 8.07 seconds and the Audi in 8.13 seconds. Similarly, in kickdown acceleration for overtaking, the two Germans are very closely matched from 20 to 80 and 40 to 100 kph, while the Volvo is the slowest in both measures. So now you know how quick they are, but now let's take a look at the way they ride and handle. They've done a wonderful job of tuning the XC40 suspension. They've managed to keep it supple but not overly soft either. 
What that means is it's good at soaking up the bumps, but it doesn't move you around too much in the process. As for the handling, well, you can feel the car's height when you go around corners because there is a bit of body roll. But the steering is actually rather good. It's light and fluid, but it does give you a bit of feedback. Sure, not as much as you get in the BMW X1, but still enough to be enjoyable in some situations. So again, as with the engine and gearbox, the Volvo doesn't encourage you to push it hard around corners either, but you can still have a reasonable amount of fun with it. At low speeds, the X1 steering can feel a little bit heavy compared to the others, and that can be a bit of a pain when you're parking or negotiating traffic. However, the advantage is, when you're going faster and attacking a set of corners, this is the best steering around. The weight is really nice at that time, and you'll really love the amount of feel and feedback that this steering gives you. Body control too is absolutely fantastic, and this is definitely the driver's car of this bunch. The downside of that superb body control, unfortunately, is that the ride is a little bit busy and it tends to thunk over bumps. It's not uncomfortable per se, it's just that over a bad road, it feels the busiest of this lot. As for the dynamics of the Q3, it does feel very tidy. Body control is very good and you get a lot of grip from the all-wheel drive system. However, in city traffic, it feels really nice and easy to twirl, which makes it great for maneuverability. When it comes to ride comfort, the Q3 does really rather well. It manages to take most road imperfections in its stride and smothers even quite large bumps very well. The Audi Q3 in top spec technology trim comes in at a reasonable 42.88 lakh rupees X showroom. But there are lesser variants in both all wheel drive and two wheel drive that are more affordable. It's a good thing the X1 has lower variants too because this M Sport version costs a whopping 44.5 lakh rupees. The next variant down, the X line, costs 6 lakhs less. But it's just two wheel drive. Amazingly, for all its equipment and tech, the Volvo, which incidentally was launched just after we finished filming this story, is the most affordable at 39.9 lakh. Although that price is only introductory. And that brings us neatly onto our final summation. The Audi Q3 is a very competent SUV. It's easy to drive with a light steering and responsive engine. It offers a commanding driving position and its seats are comfortable. However, it is now showing its age especially when it comes to its interiors and it misses out on a lot of equipment. For those who love driving, the BMW X1 is the car to go for. The steering is precise, handling is tidy and performance is strong. It is the most spacious of the lot too for people and their luggage. Yes, it has a firm ride and its lower crossover-like stance isn't SUV enough, but those aren't real deal breakers. The Volvo XC40 should have had a better rear seat and I personally wish it was a bit more thrilling to drive. But that aside, there's not much else it does wrong. The funky, high-quality cabin has massive character. It comes loaded with kit and technology, some of which is only seen on cars twice its price. And what seals the deal is that it gets its fundamentals right. More than anything else though, it's a breath of fresh air in this segment. So like with its big brother, the XC60, it seems Volvo has another class-leading SUV in its fold.